Why do you need a big block? They ask me. I reply, Why do you ask stupid questions? Hi everybody and welcome to Riggs Garage. Amid the coronavirus COVID-19 quarantine time, you can hear my deep freeze in the background doing work, keeping all our food good. And um, today, I just wanted to go over the 454 big block swap that I did in my 1963 Chevy C10. A ton of people have asked me questions about it, so I wanted to make a quick video that maybe answers some of those questions, and it can help guide some of you who want to do the same project. It's really easy, so I will walk you through it now. I made some notes that I might reference, uh, so I don't forget anything, and we'll go from there. Hopefully you like this video. Uh, if you like it, hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. Lots more fun stuff coming down the line. Uh, the big block Chevy truck, there's a 70 Mustang Fastback, and sometimes a little Honda Civic daily driver even gets some attention. So thanks for watching. All right, first things first, this generation of C10 never came with a big block Chevy in it. It had small blocks and it had inline sixes. So uh, that really made me want to add the big block Chevy here because it's an awesome engine. So. It's not really hard at all using factory Chevy parts and a small budget. So basically, um, I'm just gonna cover a few options of what can be done here, including the one that I did. Mine uses like all factory parts. Firstly, my engine is a 1986 454. It's out of a three quarter ton Chevy C20 two wheel drive truck. Um, I got the complete engine with all accessories. So I'm running all that stuff. Power steering pump, alternator, water pump, pulleys, fan, everything like that. Okay, here's my swap. Um, if you want nothing else from this video, the short story is I used all the small block original stuff from the original truck. The truck came with the 283, I believe, small block Chevy V8. I literally used everything from that. So if that's all you need to know, hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. You can go away now. Uh, I'll go into detail now if you want more details on that swap. All right, here we go. I use the factory steel mount towers. Okay, I modified them. I'll put a picture up on the screen. What I did is I cut a big notch out of them to clear these headers. And then I added structural plate to the side of them to give them structure they need to clear the headers. However, if you don't run headers and you run manifolds or you run some sort of shorty header, you don't need to do that. So you can use those factory mounts, especially with manifolds. Okay, also while we're down here, I did notch the frame. You can see the notch right here. I notched the frame to clear the headers. Uh, that is typical with the big block installation in this car. Um, I used hooker super competition headers. Uh, they do kind of hang low. The truck's not lowered, so it's still got really good ground, ground clearance. But if I do lower it, um, they will be closer to the ground than I'm comfortable with. I did use the factory transmission cross member. If you go to an automatic, you'll need to get a different cross member or modify that one. Uh, I believe you can just grab an automatic cross member and make that work. I am running the Muncie SM465 four speed at the granny low. This is basically a dump truck transmission. However, it's really strong and I have not been able to kill it yet. It's running really happily in its stock location right behind the big block Chevy. I also used um, the clutch that would have gone with this truck. Um, I think it's a 10 inch, it's a 10 or 11 inch clutch. You can just buy it at O'Reilly. Behind the 454, it was an automatic truck. I did buy a flywheel new from AutoZone or O'Reilly, and I bought it for that 86 Chevy truck, so there would be no funky balance issues um, with that engine. So I wanted to make sure that that was matched to the year, so all the balance and all that stuff would be taken care of, and I didn't have to worry about that. I used the factory 1986 starter that came off the automatic truck. It worked just fine with the manual truck. Now, since this thing is using the stock mount locations, the engine does sit pretty far back. So because of that, I did have to ding the firewall uh, with a hammer a little bit. So I'll show you that next. Ah. 
All right, you can see back here, I worked the firewall over decently, pushed it in probably a quarter inch. It's not a big deal. But because of that, you cannot run the tall, big block Chevy valve covers. You need to have these low profile stock style ones. I know they also make finned aluminum ones that are short as well. Also sitting pretty far back is the distributor. I did work over the firewall right here to make sure I'm not rubbing wires really, really hard on the firewall here. Um, you can see this back wire is touching, but it's not, it's barely touching. And there is enough room back here. I've had this distributor out with the engine in, no problem. Again, I used all the factory accessories from my donor truck. Um, get all this stuff if you can. Cooling system is factory. You can see that it has an uh, immeasurable number of leaks. Uh, this radiator is complete garbage and will be replaced soon. Also, you may have seen in some of my other videos, I did swap in power brakes. Um, I didn't want to have that single pop master with drums all around. So I have disc brakes up front. Disc brakes up front are from a 72 Chevy C10, as well as this um, power booster and the master cylinder and the proportioning valve. Also from that 72 C10, I did grab the power steering box. So uh, this powers the power steering from that 72 down below. On the back here, I did need to get this adapter from Captain Fab. Check him out on the C10 forums. He makes uh, brackets like this to make this stuff really easy. So this bracket here spaces the power booster out for my firewall. And then I did a little modification to my uh, push rod for my brakes as well. Fueling's the same as any other carburetor vehicle. Just get fuel to the mechanical fuel pump and run it up to your carburetor, of course. The fuel pump that came with this engine had a return on it, which is not something that I wanted on here. So I got that fuel pump from O'Reilly for like 20 bucks. It goes to like a 67 or so uh, Corvette that had the big block Chevy in it. Bolted right in, works perfectly. If you want to make the swap even easier than what I did, avoid headers, use an automatic transmission or a hydraulic clutch. That's the easiest, because then you do not need to notch the frame. You don't need to cut the headers up to clear the manual clutch Z-bar, and you don't need to modify the factory engine mount towers. That's the easiest way. If you like automatic transmissions, go that route. I hope this video answers a lot of your questions that you've been having. If you have any more questions about the big block swap, go ahead and hit me up in the comments below, and I'm happy to answer your questions. Um, this is the second big block swap I've done. One was a Mopar, one was a Chevy, but um, it's all, it's all really similar. So if you have questions, let me know. I'm happy to talk cars anytime. I love cars. You know this. Thanks for watching.